dear learners today i will present my write up on antitussive expectorant and mucolytic agents uh, this presentation is made based on the current status of the knowledge and at many places there will only be essentials the details can be found in the other uh, textbooks at there will be places where there will be a reflection of the experience gain and therefore this should be considered as presenter's opinion now here the contents would include the cough reflex causes of cough unique characteristics of the drugs used for dry and productive cough their actions and adverse effects the objectives of this session are to clarify concepts to prepare and enable learner to perform well in theory and viva voce examinations to prepare pg aspirants for next pre pg examination and to make most out of the limited time of interview during viva between the learner and the examiner with these start now first i'll focus on physiology of cough reflex the cough reflex is a protective reflex and its purpose is to remove irritants inhaled particles and built up sputum from the airways as early as possible and as quickly as possible the act consists of a deep inspiration which is followed by forced expiration upon abrupt opening of the closed glottis it is involves coordinated contractions of the respiratory muscles accessory and abdominal muscles so this is a protective physiological reflex the afferents of the cough reflex start from the vagus afferents and from the bronchopulmonary and neurons now there are actually two types of neurons we will understand one is c fiber and that is sensitive to chemical stimuli bradykinin and capsaicin and there is another set of fibers a delta fibers which are sensitive to mechanical and acid stimuli and both are involved in initiation of the cough a delta fibers are distributed in extra pulmonary airways only means the airways that is trachea and its branches however c fibers are distributed in intra and extra pulmonary airways means small airways have c fibers actually a high frequency sensory activation is needed to create an urge to cough it's not that a single burst would be there it will be repeated burst to initiate an act of coughing to reach a threshold now vagal afferents terminate in nucleus tractus solitarius that is bulbar cuff center and afferents from nasal mucosa and esophagus and pharynx also reach to the bulbar cuff center and therefore all inputs reach the center cortex controls the volitional part of the cuff reflex and the afferent that is efferent motor output reaches respiratory and accessory muscles for coordinated expulsive activity there are mediators and receptors involved apart from mu receptors sigma receptors serotonin receptors maybe histamine receptors one important uh, mediator and receptor is n methyl d aspartate type of glutamate receptors which are located at the central synapses of vagal afferent nerves that is c fibers now these regulate cough and play main role in fact a drug dextromethorphan is nmda receptor antagonist and it is a time tested drug for dry cough now apart from this there are two more ionotropic receptors that is ion guarded receptor channel guarded receptors which are present on c fibers in bronchopulmonary neurons one is called as transient receptor potential vanilloid receptor which is stimulated by capsaicin and bradykinin and we know bradykinin induces cough through stimulation of these receptors dextrobromphenyramine like chlorpheniramine inhibits activation of trpv1 receptors 
the other set of receptors is transient receptor potential A1. Now here the chemical stimuli such as isothiocyanate stimulates and evokes cough. And there are drugs which are being developed specifically as antagonists for TRP A1 receptors. Currently there is no set drug for this group. It should be understood that cough is only a symptom and there is always some cause for it. Therefore, finding out cause is most important. To make the analysis easier, cough is considered to be acute cough when it is less than three weeks and the causes are respiratory viral infections, bacterial infection, involvement of pleura or there is a cough variant asthma. There could be heart failure which manifests as cough. Persistent cough can be between 3 to 8 weeks and chronic cough is considered when it is more than 8 weeks. Persistent chronic cough are varied. Most important causes smoker's cough, chronic bronchitis and COPD, environmental pollutants, tuberculosis, bronchiectasis, chronic sinusitis with post-nasal drip, sleep apnea syndrome, heart failure, chronic heart failure, carcinoma lung, pulmonary fungal disorders, drug induced is important and sometimes reflex, ear canal ailments can also replace the cause cough. Perhaps one of the most important etiology is the gastroesophageal reflux of the acid and that is a very important cause of the dry cough and that should be understood because it is easily treated. Now, when should cough be treated? It's not that all cough should be treated, but when, but when a dry, irritating cough is frequent, it is in bouts, causes insomnia, affects working hours, that is health-related quality of life, causes chest pain, nausea, may pose danger, particularly in patients with recent cerebrovascular disorder, uncontrolled hypertension, or history of syncope. Sometimes cough causes syncope also and recent ocular abdominal surgery, particularly hernia surgery. Under these conditions, if cough, cough is hacking and nagging, it should be treated. However, treatment always depends on the underlying cause. Productive cough should be investigated and underlying cause should be uh, found and treated. Mucolytics and expectorants have limited role. This should be very clearly understood before we discuss the drugs. Use of expectorants and mucolytics merely add to ease out expulsion curve and is, this use is no substitute for definitive therapy of the underlying cause. Now, drug induced cough is an important treatable cause of the cough and perhaps the most important cause is dry hacking cough due to ACE inhibitors, captopril, enalapril, lisinopril, perendropril, quinapril, zofinopril, and many prills. Now, the most important thing is this is because of bradykinin potentiation. That is, bradykinin is not degraded and that causes stimulation of the receptors which I have talked about. Second is it also secretes prostaglandins which irritate and substance P which also causes feeling of of initiation of cough reflex. What is the treatment of drug induced cough? If possible, it should be changed from ACE inhibitors to angiotensin receptor blocker. A change can be done that may ameliorate cough, but if it cannot be possible, then aspirin, solindin, and iron supplements, phenyl, simple, simple soft, that is phenyl, have been found to be effective in suppressing such cough. Now, other drugs which cause dry cough are many inhaled glucocorticoids, particularly dry powder inhalation, omopatrilat, which is inhibit, double inhibitor, nebrilizin and ACE. So, since it is ACE inhibitor, it causes cough. Maraviroc, Zanamivir, they are antivirals, bleomycin, anti cancer drug, Ellaprost to prostaglandin. Isavuconazole is a new antifungal drug effective against mucormycosis. Beta blockers may worsen cough. They may not induce cough, but they may worsen cough and asthmatic attacks and nebul nebulize acetyl cysteine. Although it is used as mucolytic, but it may also induce cough during nebulization. 
Now, these causes should be known because they are treatable causes. Now, the drugs which are used in the treatment of types of the cough are pharyngeal demulsions. These are the drugs which soothe the throat and larynx and reduce irritation and cough. Now, examples of pharyngeal demulsions are linctuses and lozenges. A linctus is a thick liquid containing usually glycerin also is a formulation which contains active ingredient which act locally on throat. They have soothing and antiseptic actions. Some linctuses contain codeine, cold codeine, noscopin, is cup suppressants. They should best be avoided. Some also contain glycerol glycolate, which is actually an expectorant, but some curve formulas have a mixture of this. A lozenge is a diamond-shaped druggy or candy, which is usually sucked and it has antiseptic property. They again soothe the throat. Some contain topical anesthetic agents such as benzocaine for pain relief. Simple lemon, ginger, honey lozenge, menthol, eucalyptus lozenge, all they are simple things which can reduce the pharyngeal irritation can be used as demulsion. It is always good to use a simple, easily available, less cost. Uh, less costly drugs such as or measures such as simple lemon drops or drops. They are as good as any other costlier lozenges. So these are, uh, this is something about pharyngeal demulsion. Now antitussives are the drugs which are used to treat or suppress dry cough. As I told you, there are conditions where dry cough should be suppressed. Now large group of drugs are there. More, many of them are central acting belonging to morphine, some are not related to morphine, some are antihistamines. Now th these three groups I will discuss, codeine, full codeine and diamorphine belong to morphine group and noscopin, dextromethorphan, chlorpheidinolol, levoproxifen. They are considered non-addicting and they are non-opiates actually. Actually, if you, later on we will realize some of them are related to one of the opiates also. Now, antihistamines such as chlorpheniramine, maliate, promethazine, and diphenhydramine, the older generation, first, first generation compounds, have some cough suppressing activity. Among the peripheral drugs, there are several types. For example, direct peripheral acting drugs are levodropropazine, renoxidazine, megastine endostine and menthol whereas central and peripheral acting are levoclopirastine some local anesthetics have peripheral action benzonitate lignocaine and benzocaine we will be discussing some of them subsequently codeine is time tested gold standard cup suppressant and is history backs to hundreds of the years. The use of opium is ethanolic extract laudanum in the suppression of cough is age old. And mechanism of codeine action is that it suppresses cough center even in smaller doses than it causes pain relief. And this anti tissue action is blocked by naloxone. That means mu receptors are to some extent or opiate receptors are involved. Codeine itself is considered as a weak opiate agonist but its major metabolite may have a better activity. Some of it is converted into morphine by CYP2D6. Therefore, it contributes to cough suppressant activity. CYP3A4 also metabolizes codeine to nor codeine that also have peripheral and uh, uh, has cough suppressant activity. Currently, it is thought apart from central activity, codeine may have peripheral actions on the airways also. Unlike morphine, it is less constipating, has less abuse potential. Higher dose may cause respiratory depression and drowsiness. It has been used as oral tablets or as cuff linctus, a dry linctus, in a dose of 10 to 30 mg, 2 to 3 times daily. Constipation is always a problem when such a drug is used. Many of the linctuses available over the counter may have codeine or folk codeine like drugs. Folk codeine is a central acting drug like codeine, is a longer acting, considered non sedating and non addicting with less constipative potential. 
However, the drug is known to cause nausea, drowsiness, and to some extent constipation. Uh, the unique uh, adverse effect to folcholine is anaphylaxis may occur during anesthesia with the use of neuromuscular blocking agents, particularly succinylcholine. This anaphylaxis is due to development of Ig antibodies. And this, this incidence will be found in the European countries where it is banned actually. And it is always good to not to use such a compound. Dextromethorphan is one of the sheet anchor compounds for the treatment of dry cough. It is in use since 1953 as prescribed drug as well as OTC cup formula. The mechanism of dextromethorphan is unique. It is a centrally acting cup suppressant like codeine and is as effective but does not have analgesia, constipatic or sedative action. There is no respiratory depression in usual doses and no suppression of mucociliary function. However, this, its underlying cellular mechanism is that it binds with non-mu receptors including NMDA receptors, sigma-1 receptors and serotonin receptors. So it can be considered as NMDA antagonist. The only drug in use is NMDA antagonist for the treatment of the uh, dry cough. Dextromethorphan is metabolized by cytochrome 2D6 and one of the metabolites is dextorphan, which also have antistressive activity. But this metabolism should be kept in mind because of drug interactions. Usual doses 10 to 20 mg 3 times daily and 5 to 10 mg for children but above 6 years of age. Some excitation, irritability, confusion, abuse potential have been known. Levoproxifen is a, a derivative of dextroproxifen which is analgesic and currently not in use because it is banned. But levoproxifen has antitussic activity. Another important drug for drugs for dry cough is noscapine. Noscapine is obtained from this benz isoquinoline fraction of the opium from which papaverin is also obtained. Now this agent has like papaverin, muscle relaxant activity and also has cup suppressant activity which is equal to codeine. There is no constipation, sedation or addiction liability with this drug. It is currently most commonly used drug as tablet 15 to 30 mg 3 to 4 times daily and also in the cup formulas. It may cause adverse effects, nausea, headache. Large doses may induce bronchospasm and hypotension due to histamine release. So this should be kept in the role of antihistamines is cup suppressants. The first generation old drugs along with decongestants are approved for the treatment of cough due to chronic sinusitis with post nasal dripping. And uh, it doesn't have antihistamines, do not have mucolytic or direct cup suppressant actions. The only effect is they reduce cough in allergic disorders of the airways. Chlorphenyramine, promethazine, diphenhydramine are used as tablets or in cough formulas in the liquid form. Newer antihistamines, which are second generation non sedating drugs, do not have significant antitussy activity. However, some have unique uh, uh, activities. Azelastine, which is currently used as nasal spray, it inhibits substance P release from sensory nerve. Loretidine and epinastin may reduce frequency of chronic cough in culture and it has been found in carefully controlled trials. Now among the other central acting drugs is thylmorphine which is like codeine, glossin which is a central antitussive, it inhibits phosphodiesterase E4 subtype 4 and has anti-inflammatory activity. It has limited utility in cough suppressant drugs. Chlorphenol is also a central antitussive with antihistaminic, anticholinergic, and local acid activity 
acid longer acting it is also useful in the treatment of the dry cough now among the peripheral acting antitussives prinoxidazin is a peripheral acting which suppresses cough by dense desensitizing pulmonary stretch receptors the drug may cause nausea dry mouth discoloration constipation another is levoclopirastin now this is a levonorgestrel form of the racemic clopirastin it has antitussive activity due to central effect on the bulbar cup center but also mainly peripherally on the cup receptors in tracheobronchial tree mogustin is a peripheral cup suppressant these are the peripheral Now another peripheral acting is levotropropyzine, a non-opioid peripheral acting that inhibits efferent part of the cough reflex. That is reduces firing of the C fibers in airway sensory nerves. Now, in vitro, it inhibits the release of neuropeptide from C fibers, and therefore activation of C fibers that induce cough reflex initiate. This initiation is blocked. It is considered non-addicting. is found effective in children also but may cause weakness drowsiness palpitation and headache and the last group for the treatment of cough is dry cough is the local anesthetic lignocaine is time tested it is given by spray before conducting bronchoscopy and it also to anesthetize pharynx for interventional procedures and in ent practice apart from that it has been found that nebulized lidocaine 20 mg can also suppress cough when it is not suppressed by other agents and experimentally also capsaicin induced cough is also suppressed mepivacaine aerosol is also found to be useful in resistant cough one of the which is actually purposed for cup suppression activity is benzonitrate which is a long chain polyglycol derivative of procaine so it is a procaine derivative but has a long chain poly polyglycol this is an effective blocker of nerve conduction in the peripheral nerves in airways and inhibits pulmonary stretch receptor activity also it has slower onset of action and works for about 8 hours of duration it has been in use for quite some time it may cause mild adverse effects dizziness headache numbness and mood changes the menthol is a monoterpene from the mentha that is peppermint plant l menthone is the active ingredient and its mechanism is updated now the menthol receptors are primarily located on efferent neurons and activation of these receptors give rise to cooling sensation experienced while inhaling menthol this action is attributed to the influx and intracellular release of calcium with subsequent depolarization of receptors in the upper airways some some study shows central action also menthol enhances presynaptic augmentation by glutamate release so multiple central and peripheral actions render menthol as one of the widely used drug in the treatment of congestions and the cough it is widely used as in inhalers vaporubs lozenges and available otc and it can be actually like eucalyptus it can be given along with uh, steam therefore steam elation with this this type of the drug would be very effective in expulsion of the sputum and soothing and action on the airways now one question could be an antitussive which acts peripherally by inhibiting pulmonary stretch receptor there be one or more other but prinoxidazin should be remembered others don't have this action among the other drugs gabapentin and baclofen they have been found to be useful in certain cough uh, dry coughs particularly chronic idiopathic dry cough and is inhibitors induce cough this part i have discussed the drugs which are used for the treatment of dry cough 
now he, now i will discuss the drugs which are used in the treatment of protective cough it should be understood that if cough is productive that is associated with production of sputum and expectoration then it should not be suppressed therefore the drug should be given which ease out the removal of the tracheobronchial secretions and large number of drugs are available now one group of drugs is called as mucoactive drugs mucoactive drugs are those drugs which the change the viscoelastic properties of the tracheobronchial secretions sputum mucus and promote expulsion of the sputum from the bronchi with ease they are actually grouped as muco expectorants and mucolytics however fine details can be seen as expectorants are those which facilitate removal of liquefied sputum they act either directly such as eucalyptus oil or they induce cough when given orally by reflex action that is called as salt action from stomach mucolytics are those drugs which reduce viscosity liquefy sputum which is expectorated by patient with ease example is n acetyl cysteine carboxysteine methyl cysteine aldosysteine and dornase alpha some mucolytics have mucokinetic properties meaning thereby they increase the activity of the cilia in the airways and therefore they increase mucociliary clearance example is ambroxol and bromhexin although they are mucolytic agents per se and muco regulators can be those which regulate secretion also and that is carboxysteine basically it is mucolytic per se so this distinction can be made but these are the drugs which will be discussed expectorants drugs help or facilitate removal of sputum from airways and they are commonly used in the treatment of chronic bronchitis chronic obstructive lung disease bronchiectasis cystic fibrosis and this uh, group of drug enhances coughing out of the secretions they are direct acting steam inhalation is the best i think available expectoration at low cost or free of cost eucalyptus inhalation can also be another one or menthol inhalation could be another one among the reflex acting expectorants drugs which are often uh, irritants when given by mouth some are emetics and they are given in very smaller doses then they cause nausea and vomiting and by irritation they stimulate vagus and by stimulating vagus they increase mucus clearance via reflex mechanism most of the reflex expectorants are salt ammonium chloride rarely used nowadays potassium citrate and potassium iodide a word about potassium iodide potassium iodide is a very good uh, drug which increases the bronchial glandular secretion which are actually thin so potassium iodide is actually secreted into the glands so therefore more secretions are there and this effect is called as bronchorrhea in the same token it also is secreted in the nasal secretion so it may also cause rhinorrhea so bronchorrhea rhinorrhea but it also secreted in saliva so it disturbs the taste it will produce salty bitter taste and when you give potassium iodide for long it will alter the thyroid function because it contains iodide therefore iodides have a limited activity you must remember iodide is used as a constipating mixture in the treatment of surgery before surgical treatment of the ehlers goiter in thyrotoxicosis now one of the best documented approved drug as expectorant is guaifenesin it is also known as glycerin guaicol it is fda approved expectorant for adults and children x by influencing cholinergic innervation of air via mucus glands and also inhibits cough reflex there is a reduction in viscosity of the sputum it is considered to be nmda antagonist 
but this action may not be related to his expectorant activity. It has some muscle relaxant activity which are unrelated to expectorant properties. Usually 50 to 100 milligram is given and in India syrups are available along with antihistamines, bronchodilators and mucolytics which contain 50 to 100 milligram. Drug is considered to be safe but dizziness, sleepiness, skin rash and nausea it may cause. Among the general mucolytics and mucokinetics, see increasing mucus secretion in COPD, asthma, and chronic bronchitis is by neutrophilic elastase and proteinase and mast cell chymases. Systemic anticholinergies reduce mucociliary clearance, but topical anticholinergies do not. Therefore, inhaled ipratropium actually have better mucociliary clearance activity. Beta 2 agonists also increase mucociliary clearance. Therefore, they would have a role if cough with some production is due to underlying causes such as asthma. Now, bromhexin and embroxol. Bromhexin is derived from alkaloid Ada Toda Vasica. 8 to 16 milligram orally as tablet or syrup. Embroxol is a metabolite of bromhexane and both reduce sputum viscosity that is glucolytic action is due to hydrolytic depolarization of mucoproteins and mucopolysaccharides in sputum. They alter mucus secreting activity of the glands, enhance mucociliary clearance, and release lysosomal enzymes. By this mechanism, they act as mucolytic drugs. Embroxol's dose is 15 to 30 mg three times daily. Now, currently, both of these drugs are also combined with antibiotics such as amoxicillin, with the idea that it enhances combination enhances diffusion of antibiotic in the airway fluid and sputum therefore increases antibiotic levels in the infected lung tissues to achieve better clinical outcome there are some studies small studies which tell that it is true but larger carefully controlled studies are not there the bromhexin and ambroxyl may cause lacrimation rhinorrhea gastritis and allergy and acetylcysteine is a wonderful drug. It is a thiol containing mucolytic, which has anti inflammatory and antioxidant activity. It acts by hydrolyzing disulfide bonds of the mucin glycoprotein polymers and thereby it converts these polymers into oligomers. And the process is depolymerization. It is given by nebulization to ml 10% solution with face mask in cystic fibrosis and direct installation through tracheostomy to facilitate air clearance when it is required in ICCUs and in patients on ventilators. Now, uses are cystic fibrosis, alveolar proteinosis, bronchiectasis, prevention of contrast nephropathy. It is given before and after radio contrast media. May reverse or prevent nitrate tolerance and is most important, it is a drug of choice for the treatment of paracetamol intoxication, carbon tetrachloride poisoning. However, when inhaled, acetylcysteine may cause bronchospasm, fever, nausea, vomiting, gastritis, stomatitis, and rarely hemoptysis. However, in usual doses, it is safer. Carbocysteine is like acetylcysteine, it is dried for L-cysteine, and its mucolytic mechanism is reduction in viscosity by resetting the balance between cyalomucins and fucomucins. There is increased secretion of thinner cyalomucins, therefore, viscoelastic properties are maintained. Airway tachykinins are also reduced and cuff reflex is also suppressed. Usual doses 250 mg to 750 mg three times in COPD. It is also given with antibiotics, particularly beta-lactam antibiotics, with the connotation that it increases penetration of antibiotic into bronchial secretions. Adverse effects may occur. It should not be given patient with peptic ulcer because it breaks the mucus barrier, so exposing the ulcerative surface to acid digestion. Nausea vomiting, skin rash may also occur. Among the others are 
Dolnes alpha, a phosphorylated glycosidated recombinant deoxynuclease that breaks the polymerized DNAs of the sputum, which are released from neutrophilic degradation in the infection. Now, it is always given by inhalation in cystic fibrosis. It is costly. Aldosterone is available, which is a homocysteine derivative, is a mucolytic expectorant and has antioxidant properties in COPD. It enhances mucociliary clearance, but it may have some adverse effects, nausea, vomiting, colicky pain. Now, other drugs which are used to treat cough, for example, if there is hyperacidity and GERD, you must use the proton pump inhibitors and propionetics. If cough is due to bronchial asthma, beta-2 agonists are the drug of choice. If cough is due to tropical eosinophilia, diethyl carbamazine is the drug of choice. If there is a GERD-induced cough but not treatable, then baclofen can be used. It has been found that amyloride, which is a potassium sparing diuretic increases or improves mucociliary clearance in cystic fibrosis and smoking cessation should always be advocated in patients with chronic bronchitis and COPD. Now a word about lastly a word about the cup formulas large number of syrups lentices elixirs are available and is very very big market actually and available over the counter but these contain actually two things cup suppressant with expectorant together which cannot be considered to be rational combination if there is a single ingredient liquid it can be considered as directly for example phenyramine liquid diphenhydramine liquid can be considered as the rational drug otherwise these combinations of expectorants with antitussis cannot be considered to be rational combination therefore the treatment of cup would depend on whether it is dry or it is productive therefore the drugs for the treatment of dry cup if indicated would require cup suppressors or antitussis whereas the cup which is associated with sputum production would obviate the need of cup suppressant but we would have drugs which will facilitate removal of the infected sputum or facilitate the reduction of the viscoelastic properties by a large number of drugs called as mucoactive drugs, mucokinetics and expectorants. There are drugs which are purpose for specific use if there is a diagnosis for the cause of the cuff. And therefore, there is always a pragmatic use of cuff syrups and formulas. Always think before prescribing such drugs to the patient because many cup formulas may have antihistamines and other and the cup suppressants of opiate nature which may cause the abuse potential and also cause anticholinergic adverse effects particularly in elderly thank you very much next presentation will be an integrated lecture on carbonic anhydrase inhibitors do join good day